Can you guys see me? I gotta see, uh, let some people show up here. You guys notice I shaved my beard off. What's up, California Greenhorn? California Greenhorn Fisherman, I like that. This is a good spot for you here, California Greenhorn, because we're going to talk about different lures. So if you really are a Greenhorn, maybe you'll learn something today. Or if you know what you're doing, you'll just have fun. Yeah, I bet you didn't shave, Chad. That's not very nice of you to bring up. <laughs> What's up, CGV Tube? Let's see if we can get some get some people here. What's up, Dan Thompson? Dan Thompson, that guy's my hero. Hey, Dan, I got the JB's fish sauce in the mail. It'll be here this week. So if, I might ask my wife some questions now and again. Like, can you see how many people are on? Eleven. Eleven? Because I can't see that. I'm learning how to do this, everybody. So thanks for uh, for putting up with it. <laughs> so what's everybody doing tonight? Anybody going fishing tonight? Probably not. Yeah, I talked to JB's fish sauce. JB, he's sending me some stuff to try. Yeah, gone fishing 804. I did get my ears lowered. And I, uh, I shaved my old beard, too. I, uh, I'm in the National Guard, and I got drilled this weekend, so I had to clean up. All right, well... I think we'll get started here. Um, I'm going to just talk about some lures, talk, in, uh, talk about some different lures, the stuff that I like, uh, maybe some different stuff that I've found um, along the way. And um, if you guys have any questions or anything that you want to talk about, you let me know. I got all my lures sitting here so we can go through and uh, look at anything that we see here. Anything that you guys want to see. Hey, thanks for telling me thanks for my service. I do appreciate that. So, first I want to talk about spinnerbaits. Now, I got some crazy spinnerbaits. Um, like this one right here. Uh, this is a Molex spinnerbait, and this has three blades. Now, obviously, this isn't your typical spinnerbait. Uh, if you've uh, done much fishing, you know that this is a little bit different than a normal spinnerbait. Let me see. I'll pop out a normal spinnerbait here. We'll just talk a little bit about different types of spinnerbaits. And like I said, if you guys have questions, let me know and I will uh, I'll do my best to answer them. I'm not an expert, but I have been doing this a while, so I should be able to answer, answer your questions. Or you guys provide your input if you know what you're doing, obviously. Everyone's out there. If you're watching fishing videos, you're probably fishing. So, like I said, this is a bit of an odd spinnerbait, and uh, it's called a Molex spinnerbait. I think it's made in Italy or something. This is designed by Mike Iconelli, professional bass fisherman. So, it's a little bit odd, but your typical spinnerbait is this. Just basically a jig, a jig head, and then uh, it's got a, a wire on it, and then it's got a blade. Sometimes it has several blades. This one has a single blade. Uh, there's also different kinds of blades. Um, most common ones are the Colorado blade and the Willow blade. And then there's also one called the Indiana blade that's kind of in between. So here we have a, a Willow blade. Uh, the longer, thinner blade is a Willow blade. And the short, kind of stubby, more round blade is uh, the Colorado blade. So what's the difference here? The willow blade is going to be more flashy but less vibration, although it still does have vibration in the water. And the Colorado blade is going to provide more vibration 
and maybe less less flashiness. Um, it's still going to have some flashiness to it, but it's going to be more of a thumping, vibrating, uh, you know, action. In fact, I'm going to show you guys something. Earlier this year, on the day of the eclipse in August, I caught the biggest bass of my life. I caught a six and a half, well, not quite six and a half, six and a half pound, 6.4 pound bass, largemouth bass. And I caught it on this very spinnerbait. This is a um, Booyah Colorado blade spinnerbait. And it's a three quarter ounce. It's a big spinnerbait. It's got a huge Colorado blade. And this blade just thumps in the water big time. And uh, really creates a lot of vibration in the water. And then I have a trailer on here. So this is a Key Tech swim bait trailer. And so this adds a little bit more action as a paddle tail trailer. So those are basically the different types of spinner baits. Uh, there's also like inline spinners and things like that. Um, all right, let's see. Let's see what kind of questions we got. A, what's your favorite lure from CGV Tube? Um, well, I have a lot of favorite lures. Uh, let me break out one here. And I actually, I don't know, last year I, I didn't fish this lure as much as I normally would. And um, it's still my favorite though. Favorite style of lure anyways. So this is a square bill crankbait. And this is probably my all time favorite lure. Um, this happens to be a Strike King KVD brand. And um, it actually, it just swims in the water like a fish, kind of. And it just kind of vibrates back and forth, just like this. And, um, yeah, they really, they really work good. I love fishing, fishing crankbaits. The only thing with a crankbait, if you have a lot of heavy cover or like, well, not necessarily heavy cover, but if you have a lot of grass or weeds, then the crankbait doesn't work so well because you end up snagging and catching all those weeds but as far as like fishing around wood or rocks structure like that it really works pretty good what's up uh pgh nice to see you stopping by hey did you catch any fish with top water baits uh where where were you live at i'm live in my house have I caught any fish on topwater baits? Yeah, I've caught a lot of fish on topwater baits. Um, I do really like uh, topwater baits. Um, let's see, one of my favorites. It's kind of, let's see here. I'm gonna have baits. I'm gonna have baits strung out all over the place. My wife is gonna kill me. Okay, so obviously, there's tons of different topwater baits, but one of the one of the best ones that I like is is like a soft bodied topwater bait. Like this is a, called a pop and perch. This is like a, a lunker hunt frog. These are all soft body topwater baits. They float. <laughs> That's right. Got to tell them about the whopper plopper. So anybody that knows topwater bass fishing knows about the whopper plopper. So I actually only have one of these. And I did enter a giveaway on uh, fishing, Gone Fishing 804's channel because he was just giving one away. But I did not win. Somebody else won. Um, but yeah, I do have a Whopper Plopper. I only have one, actually. Um, I want to get some more. I'm probably going to get... Um, I want to get the next two bigger sizes. This is a 110. They make a 130 and a 190. And I actually want to use the 190 for musky fishing. So that would be pretty awesome. But... Topwater baits are great. I use a lot of different types. Um, the Whopper Plopper is definitely one of my favorites. This is a really awesome lure. I actually have a video where I'm uh, with Dan Thompson. I don't know if he's still on here anymore. And we're fishing uh, a farm pond, and, and I just caught, I don't know, 10 or 15 fish on this thing. So, yeah, I do love the Whopper Plopper. Also, with the Whopper Plopper... Yeah, I'll get on the rest of your giveaways for more Whoppers, man. Gone Fishing 804, you guys, if you like uh, giveaways, he's always got some cool stuff on his channel for giving away. So, 
This is called the Double Whopper Plopper Buzzbait. And um, I actually haven't caught a fish on this thing yet. It's really cool, uh, but it's a little bit... It's a little bit awkward. It's got these two floating um, propellers on it. So this, it's a buzz bait, but it floats. So it doesn't actually sink like a normal buzz bait, which is nice because, because um, you can stop and, and slow it down and speed it up and you don't have to uh, constantly reel it like a normal buzz bait. So that's pretty cool. My dad's on here, David Lindahl. He says, Zara Spook, Walk the Dog. I got several Zara Spooks in there. They work really good. Um, so I want to get back to spinner baits real quick. Yeah, <laughs> Gone Fishing 804 says I hate the double whopper plopper. It sucks. So I, uh, I kind of agree with you, Gone Fishing 804, although I am going to catch a fish on that thing, uh, this year. Once the old, uh, once the old ice melts, I'm going to get out there and catch some fish on that thing. Okay, so we were talking about some spinner baits earlier, and I showed you guys this crazy looking thing. This three-bladed Molex spinnerbait, which, you know, it's pretty darn cool. And then uh, I did a review on this, and I posted it on Facebook, and somebody on Facebook saw it, and he said, hey, I make some lures just like that. And so I talked to him a little bit, and he sent me a couple of them to try out. Now, unfortunately, when I got them, it was it was too late in the year, so I haven't been able to try these out but, yet. But these are... Um, a little bit different, but kind of the same design. So here's one with uh, Colorado blades on it. It's got three holler, uh, hammered Colorado blades on it. And uh, a nice looking skirt. These are kind of custom made. Um, the guy that made them, he used to have a tackle company, but now he doesn't do it anymore. So I'll talk to him, and if he wants me to give out information about these, I will. But uh, right now I'm not going to... Because I don't know if he wants to sell more of them. I know he has some, but I don't know if he wants to sell them. Um, and so he gave me a couple of these to try out, and they're pretty cool. And I'm pretty excited to get them on the water. I just haven't been able to yet because of the because of the winter. So now I got so many baits on my table here. I don't even know. I'm gonna have to clean it up. <laughs> All right. Let's see what we got here for some comments. Okay, so my, my son wants to talk worms. Gunner wants to talk about worms. Okay, uh, hold on. Gone fishing 804, no casting distance. Have to hold the rod tip way out of the water to get the action. He's talking about the double whopper. Oh, no, he's talking... Yeah, that's what he's talking about. Um... Nathan Phillippe, he likes to fish for trout and bass. What do you like to use for trout lures? Um, we catch some trout accidentally when we're bass fishing sometimes. What's up, traveling fishermen? How's Florida treating you? PGH bottom feeders, going to get on some monster flatheads. Well, you won't use spinnerbaits for that, probably. Did you catch... Something in Jim's pond. I caught a big bullhead one time on a spinnerbait. Um, I don't know how big it was. I mean, it's probably like two pounds. The biggest bullhead I ever caught on, I don't know, like a black spinnerbait. Out of a tiny little farm pond at my wife's uncle's place. Musky Hans messed up his back. Curb too bad, fish and grill. I will, if, he, if he wants to sell them, I'll get you in touch with him. I've got, uh, I've talked to you on Facebook a couple times. By the way, I'm going to make some of your uh, guacamole this weekend. I got some, uh, well, maybe not this weekend, probably Monday, but I got some leftover uh, avocados if my wife doesn't eat them over the weekend. Okay, so Gunner wants to talk worms. So let's talk a little bit about worms. I'm going to just go through a few different styles of worms here. Kind of my favorites. I've got all my stuff laying here. I got a big mess, really, but it's no big deal. All right, let's see. I gotta find some Zoom trick worms. Who uses Zoom trip trick worms? If you don't, you should be. Oh man, do I have any in here? I thought I did. Well, there's some. Right. 
Here we go. So here's a zoom trick worm. And this is one of my favorite worms. So I'm gonna ask my buddy Lane here. Lane, do you use these for uh, any artificial worms like this for walleye fishing? Lane's a big walleye guy. I don't know if you do or not, but this is excellent for bass fishing. I love fishing these with uh, either, either I'll do like a Nico rig or a wacky rig and uh or you can put these on like a what's it called a shaky head jig and they just work really good i mean any condition pretty much you can catch bass with this with this worm if you if you uh use it the right way i mean it just works amazing so there's that different kind of worm that's kind of similar kind of in the finesse range is um this is a stick bait and this is a, sometimes people just call these Senkos, and that's kind of, the Senko is actually like a brand name, um, so it's just called a stick bait or whatever, but the Yamamoto, Yamamoto Bait Company makes the Senko. This is actually a Strike King brand, and it's called a Shimmy Stick, and I do like these. I like the, the Yamamoto Senkos too, but the Yamamoto Senkos are actually pretty expensive, so they're about twice the price of these. You can get a bag of these with like, I don't know, seven or ten of them. Seven pack for under three bucks. They're like $2.96. So it's not that big of a deal. They're pretty cheap. Does it smell bad? No, it smells good. The number one lure to use in the winter. Well, I don't know what to tell you, California greenhorn fishermen, because I live in Iowa and right now everything's frozen. I know uh, in early winter, sometimes we're able to fish uh, open water, and it really slows down, and it's um, it can get pretty tough. So usually, um, I like to go to something like these worms that's a finesse worm, um, where I really slow things down and um, just take my time about fishing, and it can get pretty tough. All right, I'm gonna go through here and answer some questions. Mr. Twisters for walleyes, that's what Musky Han said. I got some of those in here. I got a little different brand of uh, Mr. Twisters. Lane Smith, he uses, says, he says he uses Rapalas or bobber fishing with minnows for walleye. I know Rapalas work good. What I like to do, um, a buddy of mine and I, we would go up to this lake and troll on his boat and we would just drag Rapalas behind or um, rattle traps and we caught um we caught all kinds of walleye doing that um okay so jonathan keel what's the right way to use this worm so let's go through this a little bit here and um there's there's really like there's a hundred ways to use a worm but we'll talk about a couple of the the more uh basic ways and um what I would say the most effective ways to use this worm. I just gotta see if I got the right hooks here. I might have one that's a little bit too big, but it'll work for showing. Okay, so the most common ways, and um, I do have a video on both of these, so if, um, if you want a little bit more information, you can go Check out my channel, and you'll be able to scroll through the videos and find some of these videos. So, with this worm, one of the best ways to do is just this. This is called a wacky rig. And literally, you just take a small hook like this, and you can use a bigger hook, doesn't really matter, and you just hook it through the center of the worm. And then you're just gonna fish this really slow. You know, you're gonna take your rod, and you're gonna kind of, actually here, I have a little ice fishing rod. <laughs> I'll demonstrate with this tiny little rod. This is a, what is this? This is a 24 inch ice fishing rod that my dad left at my house a couple years ago when he was ice fishing with me. And so I just kept it. So basically you're just gonna hold your rod tip kind of up in the air and you're just gonna move that worm a little bit and just kind of maybe shake it and then let it settle. 
And when you let it settle, that's usually when the fish are going to hit it. And you'll be able to feel the fish taking the worm. And then when you feel the fish taking the worm, you reel down the slack, set the hook. That's, I mean, that's as basic as it gets. And when it comes to worm fishing or for bass, I mean, this is just about as deadly a combo as you can come, come across. And, um, you know, it's not going to discriminate between small fish or big fish. Um, you're going to catch all kinds of fish on it. In fact, sometimes you catch, you'll be out bass fishing and you'll catch like a crappie on it or something. The other thing you can do is you can take, um, it works a little better with um, a trick worm, which is a little bit more finesse. You can see it's a little bit longer and it's a little bit um, narrower. So the action is going to be a little bit, um, you know, a little bit more, I don't know how to, how to explain it. I don't know, like wavy. <laughs> So this is called a Nico rig, rig, and it's very similar to a wacky rig. In fact, I always thought this was was actually what a wacky rig was, and somebody actually pointed out to me earlier this year that it's actually a, a different rig itself called a, a Nico rig. So basically, you're going to take, and instead of putting that hook through the center of the worm, you're going to go more towards one end or the other. Just like that. And then what I do um, is I'll actually put a, a finishing nail, like a three quarter inch long finishing nail that you get at like the hardware store. And you put that in the nose of the worm. And what that does when you're working that worm on the bottom, it will actually put the nose of the worm down and the tail will actually float a little bit. and Or just drop real slowly. And this is really good technique for bass. And there's, there's a bunch of different worms out there, obviously, and they make this type of worm where the, the tail actually has a little pocket of air in it, and it actually will float. Um, I haven't tried many of those, but um, I'm sure they would really be killer. They would do, do a great job for something like that. So that is probably, I mean, I didn't really fish that way with that wacky rig until recently, and... It has just become the most effective way for me to catch bass. Um, sometimes it's not the funnest because you have to have a little bit more patience. You're not power fishing. You're not casting a Rapala out there and just cranking it in. You're not throwing a spinnerbait and cranking it in. It takes a little bit more patience, but it really, really um, is effective. So the other thing you can do is what's called a Texas rig. And so with the Texas rig, you're going to use a, di a little bit different hook. This is called a... Uh, wide gap hook. I don't know if you guys can see that very good. But it works a little differently. And so we'll feed this through here. Basically, and I have a video on this too, guys. So if you have any questions on how to do this exactly, you can go back through my channel and find a video on it. And if there's anything that you see that you want me to do a... a a little bit more in-depth video on I can definitely do that. Um, so then, now we have the hook. The worm is on the hook and up over this, this shoulder part. And then we have the rest of the worm sitting here. So we kind of use that to judge where we're going to hook the worm. And we hook that back through the body. So now we have a weedless presentation. Uh, it's not going to snag any weeds because there's nothing, you know, the hook's not exposed. It won't snag the weeds. And then you can fish this with a weight. You can fish this without a weight. Um, you can do what's called a Carolina rig. Um, there's a lot of different things you can do. And you just kind of drag this along the bottom or kind of hop it along the bottom a little bit. And it, it is a really excellent lure. I mean, when I grew up, I first knew bass fishing as fishing with a rubber worm. You know, that's, that's what I learned. And I don't know if my dad's on here. Oh, yeah, there he is. He, uh... He taught me how to do all this stuff, and he's caught a lot of big fish on rubber worms. All right, so let's go back through. Gone fishing 804, he says he does 90% Texas rig, and that's what I was just showing there. I should have said that, um, Texas rig. And there's a lot, of different, uh, a lot of different rigs out there for worms. Those are going to be very common. Hey, Herb Mahoney. Yeah, the Nico rig is awesome. I use that a lot. Thanks for stopping by, Herb. I've been uh, watching Herb's posts for a long time on Google+. He's always posting cool stuff on there. 
about fishing. All right, all right, where are we at? The Ned Rig is the way to go. Okay, so the Traveling Fisherman's talking about a Ned Rig, and I actually do not have a Ned Rig. I had some Ned Rig jigs that I had gotten in one of my uh, bait crates, and I actually gave them away to, to Dan Thompson, who won my giveaway. Um, so I'm the Ned Rig is something I'm going to start fishing with this year. I don't even have one to show you. Basically, um, it's a tiny little jig head, uh, with kind of a flat end on it and then you put a really short worm on it like three or four inch worm uh, that's kind of like these uh, stick baits that I had kind of like that but it's shorter and you can use um, on Ned Rigs you can also use like different style baits it doesn't have to be a worm like um, I have some little fish baits they look like little fish they're like four inches long and it would work great on a Ned Rig. It would actually look like a little fish swimming along the bottom of the lake eating stuff out of the mud. Which obviously bass or other fish see that, they're going to want to eat that. Alright, alright. What do we got on here? Thanks for stopping Godfish in 804. Lane Smith said he's going to fall asleep listening to me. As long as you keep listening, man, that's cool. All right, so we're going to move on um, and talk about something different here. We're going to talk about swim baits. And there's several different types of swim baits. And I will get some out here. I know swim baits are um, kind of all the rage these days. And there's some crazy swim baits out there. Now, I have one moderately crazy swim bait. I mean, it's not even close to some of the stuff that's out there. There's guys out there fishing with baits that are um, like eight, 10 inches long. Um, and in the states where there's big fish, I mean, they're catching, they're catching fish on these things. Big bass. But I got a couple of different styles here and we'll talk about them. And um, they're, they are really effective baits. All right, and then I got one crazy bait. It's actually, it's actually a musky bait that I'll pull out because I do some musky fishing. I do some musky fishing a little bit. Um, I don't do very well at it, but I tr I try. <laughs> I got a couple of different swim baits here for musky fishing. All right, so let's look at a couple of swim baits. So there's several different types of swim baits. So you can have, um, basically this is a swim bait that you have to rig. And I have this rigged up on a, on a weighted hook. It's got a weighted hook on it. But that is just a soft plastic bait. And then you put it on a hook and you just swim it through the water. It's got a big old paddle tail on it. So when that swims through the water, it's going to have a lot of action, just like a, a fish's tail would. So that's one type of swim bait. The other thing that's nice about this type of swim bait is you can use it as a trailer on other baits, like uh, a swim jig, a chatter bait. Like here's a chatter bait, chatter bait right here. And on the, this chatter bait, I have a, a Key Tech swim jig trailer. So, I mean, they work. They're pretty versatile baits. You can use them however you want. Um, they work real good. Then we also have like this pre-rigged swim bait. So this is a pre-rigged swim bait. It is a Berkeley Power Bait. No, I'm wrong. This is a this is a Storm. Uh, I can't remember what it's called, like a Swim Shad or something. And it's pre-rigged. So there's a weight in the head, and then there's a jig head in there. You know. So here's where you tie it on. Here's your hook. And these work really good too. And they're super easy. You just chuck this thing out there and you reel it in and you catch fish. So it, uh, it really does work well. Um, and it's super easy. The thing I like about this bait, I can take my kids out and I can, if they want to cast, I can tie on one of these baits. It's not super dangerous. It's got one hook on it, but they can chuck this thing all day long and just wind it up. And usually they're not going to get snagged on anything and they have a good chance catching a fish. 
So I do really like those. Then, um, and forgive me if I don't hit all of them here. There may be some swim baits that I don't have. This is a little different style of, uh, I guess you could call it, it's kind of like a pre-rigged swim bait, but there's a jig head and a hook, but the jig head is separate from the, from the swim bait body. So this is actually a, a 360 GT search bait. These things are awesome. Um, I just started using them this year and they're really sweet. They work amazing. Um, then, kind of like the creme de la creme of swim baits, is the jointed hard swim bait. So this is a, I gotta watch out so I don't hook myself here. <laughs> this is a Biwa, uh, it's called a S trout. Five and a half inch long swim bait. And it, it swims just like that in the water. It looks like a real fish. <laughs> it's pretty awesome. I did, a, I did a video on this where I had a camera underwater and, and you could see it swimming by and it looked really, really nice. Um, it looks, I mean, it looks like a real trout. And this is actually a, a trout colored version. Um, and we don't have a lot of lakes with trout where we live, but um, we actually did not buy this. We won this, um, this bait, my wife won it <laughs> in a giveaway. Uh, from Pond Hopper Nation, and um, we took it out. I, ca I caught so many fish. I took this out one day, and I probably caught 20 bass on it, and, um, you know, even the little bass. I mean, there were bass that were just maybe twice as long as this lure that were eating this thing. It was crazy, uh, but it was a lot of fun, and it's super easy. You just throw it out there and, and wind it in. Um, nothing to it. Yamamoto Hardtail. I've never heard of that. Is that a, um, I imagine that's a swim bait and it's got a tail that's shaped like a heart. It would make sense. Chatterbaits talk too much. <laughs> oh man. <laughs> Crappie and other panfish love the power bait and the pre-made baits. Yes, they do. Okay, so this is my craziest swim bait. Well, kind of. I have another one here I'll show you in a minute. This is a big jointed swim bait. It's a hard bait. It, I got it as a musky bait. It's a, like a, a little northern pike is what it's supposed to be. And uh, it swims really nice through the water as well. I bought this thing off of Amazon, and I'm sure it came from like Russia or China or somewhere. Um, it's, not, it's not the highest quality lure, but it, I mean, it works okay. Um, actually, my wife was ordering something, and she needed to like buy ten more dollars to get free shipping. So I said, "Hey, I'll find something on there." So that's what I bought, <laughs> and I have fished with it for musky. I haven't caught anything on it though. Yeah, that is a sweet lure. It takes a you gotta have a big bait. Or you gotta have a big rod to run that thing. Okay, so I got one more one more big swim bait here. This thing is pretty crazy. It's called the Bass Harasser. And uh, this is a <laughs> this is a big old swim bait. And I don't know, it's it kind of looks like a like a trout of some kind. I've actually fished this thing once. Um, is all. I only fished it one time, but it's just a big old <laughs> soft pre-rigged swim bait. Like I think if you caught a musky or or a big pike with this, it, it would tear it up pretty good. You may you maybe get three or four fish out of it before before it's gonna be chomped up. I didn't buy this bait. I won this in a tournament, um, in a raffle after a musky tournament. I seen it and I thought, well, I gotta get that thing, and I'm gonna try and catch a bass on it. I haven't yet though, but I'm gonna I'm gonna catch a bass on this thing. Hopefully like a nine pounder. Which wouldn't quite be the state record in Iowa, but it would be close. Oh, new kid. I love the bass harasser. Tear them up down here in Georgia with it. Yeah, well, there's big enough fish in Georgia for a, for a bait that big. But, uh, yeah, it's a 7-inch bass harasser. I actually, I don't think I have a bass rod that would really be heavy enough to throw that thing on. But, yeah, it's a big bait. Oh, I'll show you guys my biggest topwater bait. If I can get it unwound. Well, maybe I won't. I got a big mess in here. I 
should have fixed this before I went on went on the air. Dang it. Well, that's not gonna work. Oh, there we go. I got it fixed. So this is a musky uh, topwater bait. And I'm just gonna show you guys real quick since I have it out. And I actually caught um, a 14 inch smallmouth bass on this thing when I was musky fishing in Wisconsin a couple years ago. And um, it's pretty crazy because this bait is like 10 inches long. If I'll ever show it to you here. Finally, there we go. Okay, so <laughs> this is my biggest topwater bait. And this is like a whopper plopper, basically. Um, but as you can see, it's absolutely massive. And um, this is for, for fish and muskies. And I was up in Wisconsin a couple years ago. And I had a 14-inch smallmouth hit this thing and flew out of the water like a foot. It was crazy. This thing was uh, pretty amazing. It's, uh, it's fun to fish those big topwaters. Lane Smith says, just go to the classics. Use a bobber and a nightcrawler. Catch a 22-inch bass. Chad's, Chad Stinson's making somebody we, fun of somebody we know that lied and said they caught a 17-pound bass <laughs> in Iowa. Didn't happen. Damon Neal, when is the giveaway going to happen? Well, the giveaway is going to happen when we get uh, a few more subs. But it won't be long, I don't think. But there's no giveaway tonight. We're just on here talking about lures tonight. Is there any lures you want to talk about? All right, so we're going to move on here. And let's see what we're going to talk about next. So um, we're going to go and talk about some crankbaits here. I don't, I don't, I don't have any bobbers, Lane. I just don't, I just don't bobber fish, man. It's too slow for me. All right, so let's talk crankbaits a little bit. And we got a few different kinds here. Um, obviously the square bill crankbait, which I showed you guys earlier. This is kind of a shallow diving crankbait, but it has a lot of uh, kind of tight vibration. And uh, it works really good. Bass love these things. And... Uh, they're fun to fish because, especially from the shore, there's not a lot of crankbaits um, that work the best from the shore because if you have deep diving stuff or you're trying to, you know, you can't really fish deep deep diving crankbaits from the shore because when you get them closer to the shore, obviously they're going to dig into the ground and then, you know, you could have issues depending on the vegetation and stuff like that. And it just, it just doesn't work great. So, you know, I don't have a boat, so I'm fishing from the shore most of the time. I do have a kayak, so sometimes I can get out in the middle of the lake, but I like to fish that kind of, you know, anywhere from two foot to 10 foot water range. And this bait works really good. And especially about around rocks and riprap, stuff like that, or even um, uh, timber. A lot of people are a little bit frightened to throw a crankbait around timber, but it really isn't that bad. If you, um, if you throw it around timber and you get hung up, just let off the tension off your line and usually it'll float back up to the surface and come loose on its own. Um, so let's see, we got some different kind of square bill crankbaits. Um, and then we have lipless crankbaits like a rattle trap, which is kind of a classic lipless crankbait. I've got a couple different ones in here. Oh, that's my favorite one right there. And then we got some deeper diving crankbaits. So, here we have the square bill crankbait, and that dives anywhere from two to five feet. Um, this is a little bit deeper diving crankbait, and this probably dives, um, you know, eight to eight to ten feet. And the bigger the bill, the deeper it's going to dive. Um, I really don't have anything that's much much deeper than that. This is probably eight, like like I said, eight to twelve feet. Um, 
there's some in-between stuff like this this square bill crankbait it dives probably between four and six feet and then um we have the lipless crankbait so this is uh and this one's been used a bunch this thing's caught a lot of fish and you can see it's been bounced off of rocks all the chrome's been knocked off the front end but um this is a lipless crankbait so when you throw this out and reel it in it just kind of vibrates back and forth like this and it does sink i mean there's no float on this bait it's going to sink down to the bottom so you just kind of chuck it out there and start reeling and you can vary your retrieve different things like that um these are awesome baits these work for walleye love these things um largemouth bass smallmouth bass pike uh, anything you put this in front of they're going to try and eat it and usually they vibrate really you know kind of really hard vibration and they usually have a rattle in them so this one has a bunch of rattles in it here's a different version of the same thing made by a different company this is a sea bile brand and it's a little bigger and heavier i like these a lot um i like the heavier bait just because um being a shore fisherman i can really chuck it way out there and get a lot of distance on my cast so another thing we have here um well there you go new kid says the lipless cranks are the go-to baits down in south georgia they're pretty much the go-to baits everywhere. Um, they do work pretty awesome. This is uh, actually a wake bait, but it's kind of a kind of like a square bill crankbait. And I have another version of it here from a different company. And it just kind of floats on top of the water, and it just swims back and forth right on top of the water. And that's why they call it a wake bait. It just makes a little wake. Um, and these are these are pretty effective too. Hey, check it out, Chad. I got a weedless spoon. My buddy Chad, Chad Stinson on here, he loves the weedless spoon. In fact, he kind of beat me up a little bit because I haven't made a video on the weedless spoon yet. That's coming. The weedless spoon video is coming. Okay, so another thing we're going to talk about here um, is a kind of different kind of crankbait called a jerkbait. As you guys can see here, I have a big mess in my tackle box. Kind of with hard baits, you know, there's... Sometimes it's kind of st tough to store them without getting them all tangled up. I'm gonna try some different things this year to kind of keep them keep them from getting um, tangled up too bad. So this is a this is called a husky jerk, and uh, it's just a little it's just a little lift crankbait, thin, long, kind of a small round lip. And so what happens is you jerk this thing in the water. You don't just reel it. You reel up the slack, jerk it, and then let it sit for a second. And it will kind of it will kind of um, float back up to the surface a little bit. Some of them don't float all the way to the surface. They suspend halfway. And so, I mean, you can just reel these in, but you kind of jerk bait them. You jerk them in. And then um, they have a real crazy action. So when you... When you jerk the rod, it just, you know, shoots that bait all over the place. And it really triggers the aggression in bass. If you can find, if you can find the bass, um, you will catch them on this thing. Um, and there's many different types. I mean, well, not really types, but different styles or whatever. This is a, a really small one. Um, and this is actually made by a, a, a small company uh, that makes some kind of custom lures. The Ridge Fly Company is the name of this bait company. Um, this is a bigger one. This is called a bull crank, and you can use it like a, a jerk bait, or you can you can fish it like a like a regular crank bait. But it works really good as a jerk bait, and it's a big big bait. So you can throw this way out there and get a lot of action on it. Um, this one's a little different. This is this is a Livingston lure, and I only have one of these because they're actually really expensive really expensive um, but this lure actually has a little bit of a, like a little speaker inside of it and a battery and once uh, once it makes um, contact with the water it completes a little circuit and actually it emits a little noise like a little croaking noise and I guess that's what fish some bait fish noise what Livingston says um, but this thing works really really good and I don't know if it's because of the, the little speaker in there that makes a bait fish noise 
or just because, I mean, it's a jerk bait and they work well. Um, and these are pretty expensive for like these Livingston brand. You can get jerk baits for a pretty reasonable price, you know, between five and 10 bucks. This is more like 10 to 15 bucks. So they're a little bit more expensive. So I'm gonna put a few of these back so I don't end up in the hospital tonight. A jury bait, what is a jury bait? I don't know that I know what a jury bait is. There we go. Now I at least got enough of them out of my way to uh, not hurt myself. <laughs> so what I'd like to do now is just ask if anyone has any questions. Anything that anyone would want to talk about and maybe that I can demonstrate um, and show you. Otherwise, I got some crazy lures uh, that I can bring out and show you. Some different cool stuff. Will my phone stop recording? I don't know. It seemed to work this time. So I'm learning how to do this. I'm learning how to do this live stream stuff. And it, it's been giving me problems. I just use my phone to do this and then I have my computer sitting here that I'm looking at the comments on. So, you know, I don't know, it seems to work okay, but the first time we tried it, we had um, we had the, the, the app just quit or whatever. So Chad says, do you ever fish flies? Uh, I have never fished, uh, I've never fly fished. Um, I fished some really small I don't know if you call them flies necessarily, but really small jigs on ultralight gear for panfish and stuff, but never on a fly rod, like a traditional fly rod. Um, I've heard it's it's pretty good time, but I've never I've never done it myself. You getting into fly fishing, huh? Well you'll have to teach me, Chad, because I don't know how to do that. So I got this little swim bait. I've seen this thing. Actually, my wife saw it at the Bass Pro Shops, and um, it's kind of odd. It's um, it's got three. It's got one jig head, and it's got three swim baits attached, and they're attached. I don't know. It's weird. They have this these little arms on it, but the other swim baits don't have any hooks in them. So it's I don't know. It's crazy. But my wife threw this out there. And like her second cast, she caught a northern, northern pike. She'd never ever caught a northern pike before, and she caught her first one on this. Um, another lure that I really love, um, that uh, is a little bit, I, I think it's kind of new. Uh, the first time I seen him was last year. It's called a pop and perch, and it's from Strike King. So it's kind of like the soft-bodied frog, but it has more of a fish profile. It looks like a fish. And it has this long tail that's kind of like the tail of a fish. Um, and it's soft-bodied, of course, so when the fish bites it, it bites down, gets the hooks in its mouth. Um, I had just started using these this year, and I have three of them now. But the first one I bought, I caught so many fish on it that I was down to like two of these little tails right here. And it would literally sink almost as fast as I could reel it in because it, it would take on so much water because it caught so many fish. This is one of my absolute favorite baits. Um, and it's, like I said, it's just new this year. It's made by Strike King. And um, they did design it too to where it doesn't take on a lot of water. If you fish any soft plastic frogs, um, they fill up with water and you kind of have to squeeze them every, every few casts. This doesn't do that that bad. I mean, it still does it, just not as bad. These Lunker Hunt brand frogs, they do it really bad. Um, in fact, I want to talk about that real quick. There is a brand of frogs called Booyah. And uh, let's see, I got them here. I have a lot of frogs. I love fishing with soft frogs. Soft body frogs. So this is a Booyah popping frog. And I have a, a regular Booyah frog here too somewhere. Oh yeah, here it is. 
And um, these things absolutely do not take on water. I don't know how they do it. There's a big hole in the bottom where the hook comes out, but they do not fill up with water. So um, they're really convenient when you're when you're frog fishing because you don't have that issue where your frog starts to stink or <laughs> sink after four or five casts because it's filling up with water. I don't know how they do it, um, but these are definitely some of my favorite frogs to use. Um, and they're really reasonable. Booyah brand stuff isn't too, isn't too spendy at all. Here's something that's all the craze these days. Jeff Fainer says he caught um, some good, nice size fish with the Booyah popping frog. Okay, now hold on. Are you talking about short strikes on this? Yeah, there is a long tail on here. And so what Jeff is talking about here, he said, he said, um, you catch a lot, or you, you get a lot of short strikes with this long tail. So let me kind of go through something real quick here. So with a frog, um, you have these, these skirts basically, and that's supposed to simulate the frog's legs or whatever. So Typically, when you get one of these frogs, and I have one that isn't trimmed, or no, it is. All mine are trimmed, so I can't show you, but they end up with really, when you buy them, the, these legs are way longer, like another half again as long as this. And so they're really long, and they end up um, causing the fish to bite at the bait and miss it. So most, most people that fish with frogs, what they'll do is they'll, what I do, I flip the frog over like this, and everything that's past the front of the frog, I just cut it off with the scissors. In fact, I have a video on how to do this on my channel, but you just cut whatever's left over off of that frog with the scissors. There's still plenty of frog, or plenty of skirt there to simulate the frog's legs, um, but you don't get short strikes. Now, what he's saying on this bait, it's got a longer tail, but if you look at it, it looks long, but it really isn't much longer. It's about the same. And I really never had issues with this, sh with short strikes. You can see it's a little bit longer than the front of the bait. I never had any, any issues with it, but I know what you mean with frogs. You definitely have to trim those, trim those legs so that you don't, uh, you don't have short strikes. Here's a crazy little mouse lure. I never caught anything on that, but it's kind of neat. So I thought I'd better buy it. Chad says he fishes the Booyah frog on the banks of the Mississippi in lily pads. Yeah, I bet that would be awesome. OG Rusto has a question. He says, does the top color of the frog matter? And I'm going to say no, it does not matter. The top color of the frog is meant to catch fishermen, not fish. <laughs> Obviously, the fish can't see the top of the frog. So if you take these two frogs right here, one is yellow and one is green on the top. But underneath, they're both almost identical. They're both white belly, they look the same. And if you think about it, if you're looking at something, if you're looking at something toward the sky and you see the bottom of it, um, a lot of times you're just gonna see like a shadow. You're not necessarily gonna be able to make out what, what the bottom of that looks like. Now, obviously if fish is in water, it's probably a little different. I don't have fish eyes. But if I use the common sense that I have, it tells me that the frog, the color of the frog is more designed to catch the fishermen instead of the fish. Now, that being said, I like cool looking frogs as much as the next guy. So, you know, they catch me sometimes, but that's okay because it shouldn't really matter to the, to the, to the fish. Here's a frog. There ain't no frog in Iowa where I'm at that looks anything like this that I know of. And um, it'll still catch fish. So, and it's, it's neat looking. People see it and they're like, wow, that's a crazy orange frog. So they want to buy one. As far as I know, though, it shouldn't matter. I, uh, you know, fishing lures are meant to catch fishermen as much as they are fish. And I love to buy fishing lures, so it works. <laughs> the only thing I like to buy more than fishing lures is fishing reels. But they're really expensive, so I don't get to do it as much. Okay, so let's see. The bottom color that matters um, 
Yeah, the bottom color matters the most. And the lighter colored belly in murky water, I don't know how much that matters, Chad. Or, um, you know, in, I would say in, you know, I don't know if, if, it probably works either way. Most frogs have a lighter colored belly. So most frogs that I have are lighter colored belly anyways. How many turtles have I caught? I've caught in a couple there, Gunner. As long as fishermen don't get hurt. Fishermen get hurt a lot. They get their feelings hurt when they lose a big fish. All right, anything else anybody wants to talk about? What topics do you have? Any, uh, anybody want to talk about chatter baits, creature baits? Here's a chatter bait. I started using these a couple years ago and they're really awesome. There's different brands. This is actually chatter bait, chatter bait brand. It's just a jig on, with a blade on it. These work really good. <laughs> Chad says the stuff he learned about frogs must have been a Bass Pro Shops marketing scheme that got him to buy $100 in frogs. That could be very true. You never caught anything on a chatterbait. How's that possible? So we'll talk a little bit about chatterbaits because OG there says he's never caught anything on a chatterbait, and that's crazy. I've caught so many fish on chatterbaits. really have a bunch of them in here. Where did I put them all? All right, let's talk a little bit about chatterbait. So basically, a chatterbait is almost identical. Um, well, let me start over. It is very similar in action to a spinnerbait. So it's going through the water. It's got the skirt. You probably have a trailer on there, and it's vibrating. So right there, that's what a spinnerbait does. The only difference is it's a little bit more compact. So with a spinnerbait, you have your vibration and the flash kind of out here, away from the jig head. So the bait is a, maybe a little bit bigger, it appears to be bigger, or it appears to be two different creatures to the fish. They might see it as one fish, the blade, and another fish or something else as the, as the jig. Chatterbait's a little different. It's a little more compact all in line, so the fish is gonna think that it's just one creature. Um, I found that um, when you're fishing a spinnerbait, I mean, spinnerbaits work good everywhere. I can't deny that. Spinnerbait's probably one of the greatest baits ever. But I think that this chatterbait works a little bit better in darker water, so, or dirtier water. I think that it um, reduces the amount of missed strikes that you have. In my experience, I know that I've had with a spinnerbait, um, and I've caught so many fish on a spinnerbait, but I've had a lot of hits that I missed. And I don't feel that I have that many with the chatterbait because it's just a little bit more compact. Now, this chatterbait's a little bit different. This is called a chatterbait freedom. So this hook actually f is free. I mean, it just floats around on there. It's on a little... Um, like an eyelet and you can actually change this hook out and put a different size hook on or if this hook gets dull You can put a new one on um, This is kind of one of their newer baits But I I just think that they work a little bit better in dark water or dirty water. I should say So what is a creature bait? Yeah, go get one OG man. They work great. Okay, so here's what a creature bait is. And I, I do like fishing with creature baits. Basically, a creature bait is anything that looks like a, kind of like a, um, I don't know, a crawdad or something different. Now this is a, this is from a little bait company called Dead, Deadly Strike Bait Company. And I actually got this in, a, in my bait crate. And so I'll show you what this looks like. So, I don't know. I mean, it kind of could be thought of as a crawdad, but it has, it looks like a little bug. And then it has these appendages or whatever you want to call them. And so, it goes through the water and it makes all this commotion with all these different things. And you kind of fish it 
Most of the time you fish it Texas rig style, uh, like you would a, a soft plastic rubber worm. Um, and I have a couple other ones here I'll pull out and show you guys. So here's some different versions of a creature bait. What's up, California Greenhorn? Good to have you back. So I don't know what you'd call this one exactly, but it's just kind of a, a bait with a tail on it. I don't know, sometimes they call these beavers, but I'm not sure that's exactly what that one is. There's different variations. Um, this one looks like a little crawdad, basically. It's just a little crawdad. It's got a little, little claws. Here's a little bit bigger version of a crawdad. I don't know. I think they all kind of stem from crawdad, and they just kind of, kind of change them up, make them a little bit crazier, or different looking. There's a that's a definitely like a crawdad looking bait. I don't know how well you can see that. And these work great. I mean, you put them on a jig, um, and that's something we haven't really talked about much, but you put them on a jig as a trailer, or you fish them just by themselves, Texas rigged. Another thing that's good to do with these is called punching. So if you have a mat of vegetation, um, you just put a pegged, you put this on a hook, Texas rig, and then you put a pegged, pretty heavy sinker, like three quarters of an ounce or an ounce sinker, and then you kind of pitch this into the mat and let it fall straight through. And usually a mat, a big mat of vegetation is going to have fish under it. So it'll fall through and then you can jig it up and down a few times. If you don't get a bite, you really didn't do it again in a different spot. And that's a really effective way to catch fish. Um, and actually it could be a pretty fast way to catch fish if, if uh, the fish are biting or if you find them. See you later, Lane. <laughs> what bait should you punch for musky with? Let's see. Well, come on, musky hounds. You probably know better than anyone. Here's a bulldog. <laughs> Maybe you can punch with that. This is a musky bait called a bulldog. <laughs> there you go. You can punch with that, musky hounds. I don't know how well it would work, but... <laughs> Uh, bobber stoppers or toothpicks? That's a good question, Jeff Fainer. Jeff Fainer. So, bobber stops work really good for pegging your weight. And I don't have, I didn't um, have a setup, so I had a line and a weight to show you guys. But when you're pegging your weight, it means you're keeping it from moving around. So you want to keep it in one spot on your line, right up against your bait. Or if you don't peg it, then it can just float on your line. Um, away from your bait and there's different reasons for doing both when you're punching you definitely want to have your weight pegged because you don't want your bait to fall through and your weight to get stuck on a lily pad or something or vice versa so you want them to fall together as one unit so what you can do and um, use a bobber stop it works really good um, when I was growing up uh, my dad always taught me to use a toothpick so you actually stick a toothpick down between in the, the hole of the sinker where the where the line goes through. You just stick it down there, push it in as far as you can and break it off. And now that toothpick is jammed in there between the line and the sinker and it's just gonna hold it, hold the sinker in place from moving it around. So that works really good. Um, most guys these days are using a rubber bobber stop. That works well too. Um, I think the toothpick actually, I guess in my experience works a little better just because it seems to stick better, um, or hold, I should say. Whereas the bobber stop is maybe moves around a little bit more. That was a good question, Jeff. Um, he also had a question about um, like the lunker hunt buzz frogs. The lunker hunt buzz frogs. What was your question on that? Let me see if it's I can sc scroll up and find it. I'm trying to keep everyone's questions here. <laughs> do I tie a leader to my braid? There's another good question. Um, I do sometimes. Depends on what I'm doing. Um, I used to... 
I used to do that a lot when I, um, I used to fish with a spinning reel and then, um, to like finesse fish like so I'm wacky rigging or using a Nico rig and I would uh I wanted a, I always wanted to have braid on and um so I would have braid and I would tie a liter um of monofilament line on there or um or fluorocarbon. I like fluorocarbon because it's invisible underwater um so you know fish can't see the line. Um but anyways um what was I going to say? I lost my train of thought there. Yeah, so I do I do that once in a while, uh, but I don't do it often. Usually, if I'm the only reason I'm probably going to tie a leader on is if I'm doing a, uh, a Carolina rig, and I'll use braid for the main line, and then I'll use like a two or three foot leader of some heavier. Um, fluorocarbon or monofilament line, like anything like 17 to 20 pound or something like that. Yeah, I don't think you could punch for musky, musky Hans. I mean, I don't know. They make some really big soft plastic baits. I just never tried it. I got some really big hooks. I don't know. That'd be interesting to try. I got some really big like six aught um, hooks. So if I could find some really big creature baits, and then go punching mats for muskies. That would be interesting. <laughs> Maybe, you know, muskies are hard to catch. Maybe that's, that's the new trick to catching them. Something that's really cool about soft plastic baits, guys, is there's lots of, lots of people out there making them. So, um, you know, I've showed you some different ones from some big companies. Um, like Strike King and Yamamoto and Zoom and all these companies that are huge companies that make make uh, you know thousands and thousands and thousands of different types of stuff and you know hundreds of thousands of pieces of this bait or whatever. Well, like here's an example of this Southern Tackle Company. So these guys are a small company and they make you know they make their own. Um, their own soft plastic baits. You know, this is probably some some guy in his garage or, or in his basement making these baits. And look at them, they look great. These are every bit as good as as the big companies. And, um, you know, it's kind of cool to support some of these smaller guys uh, that, are, that are doing a good job at making baits. And I, I have some that I like to use. Um, these guys I have never tried before, but Deadly Strike Bait Company, they're a new, or a, a small bait company. This bait company is, is really good. This Crazy Hick Bait Company. Um, I've got a few different things from them. So it's fun to support these, uh, these smaller companies. And sometimes you'll find stuff that they have that, you know, maybe other, other bigger companies don't, don't really have much of. Because they're kind of a little bit more innovative. And when they make smaller runs, they can, um, you know, they can experiment a little bit more. So, um, I got this jig the other day, and I want to show you guys this jig. Now, I don't do much with jig fishing uh, because, like I said, I, I fish from the bank a lot. And um, up here in the Midwest, um, in the summertime, our, our, our lakes just get really weedy. So, it, it just doesn't work all that well to, to fish uh, with a jig from the shore. Uh, but I got this jig the other day, and I wanted to talk about it. It's called the Zero Gravity Jig. And... This is actually a pretty good sized jig. Um, you know, this this looks like a heavy jig. And the interesting part about this jig is it actually is like super light. It weighs less than a quarter ounce. Less than a quarter ounce, which is crazy. A quarter ounce jig is normally, you know, it's really small. Um, really, really small. This is a, a pretty big jig. And it also has a big surface area. So what this jig does, it's called the zero gravity jig. And when you uh, when you w work this jig, it actually only falls one foot every three seconds. Um, so it really just really slowly sinks through the water. Um, I would think this would be an excellent thing to fish um, when the fish are you know finicky and they're not real active and aggressive. So I'm looking forward to taking this out and fishing with it. I probably won't try and fish it from the shore too much though. I do have a kayak, 
So I'm going to try and do that. Um, but in the springtime, before things weed up real bad, you can you can have a lot of good luck from the shore with the jig. So I'm definitely going to check this thing out. Um, it is really cool. <laughs> um, I, I found one in uh, one of my bait crates. And yeah, I'm going to see if I can find, maybe find some more to purchase because they're pretty cool. What trailers do I use? Well, um, you're talking for the jig. Um, you can use several different kinds of trailers. Usually for a jig, I'm going to use a crab, a crawdad style, or um, a creature style bait. It works. It works pretty good for jig fishing. Um, and you know, you depending on what type of year, what time of year it is, and um, how active the fish are, you know, you can vary how big that you go with that trailer. Um, if the fish are not active, um, you're going to go, in my experience, I, I do better off with, uh, with smaller, um, more compact baits. Yeah, I need to work on my jig fishing too, Jeff. Um, I, like I said, I don't do a whole bunch of it. Um, I do like fishing with jigs. It's kind of like finesse fishing or just fishing with a rubber worm. It's just not as weedless, so it it um, you know it doesn't work as well from the bank in my in my experience. I'd love to have a boat, you know, and go <laughs> flipping docks and stuff with the jig, but um, you know I don't have that luxury at the moment. Um, I can do that a little bit with uh, with my kayaks. I do got a couple of kayaks, and um, you can kind of fish them out of there pretty decent. Chad Stinson, he said he bought a few of the zero gravity jigs in different colors at Gander Mountain, Gander Mountain Outdoors a few days ago. Looking forward to using them. Yeah, they look pretty neat. I, I'm pretty excited about them. I tell you what, guys, um, what was the Sportsman Authority? Uh, Sportsman's Warehouse. I was at a Sportsman's Warehouse and I saw some really crazy lures. Let's see, where is it at? And. So I bought a couple of them, and this is just one of them. This is called a um, knuckle bait. So it's got a ball on it. It's like a spinner bait, but it's got a ball on it instead of a instead of a blade. And it's um, so in baseball you have a pitcher throw a knuckle ball, and the ball just kind of moves around in different ways. And that's what this ball does. It just kind of moves around in different ways. And it has a little bit of vibration to it, but not like a spinnerbait, not not even close. Um, but what this ball does, it has a little prism inside. It's like a little disco ball. So it just shoots light all over the place, um, refracts light. And it's, man, it works really good. I, I bought this thing. I took it out and uh, I did a little review on it. And uh, I actually have a video with some underwater footage of it so you can see what it looks like. But uh, I caught a whole bunch of northern pike on it and um, caught a bunch of bass on it too. And I just put a swim bait trailer on it. You know, you could fish it without a trailer. Um, I actually caught um, a whole bunch of fish on it without a, before I ever even put a trailer on it. Um, but it's pretty neat. And it's, uh, it's from Yozuri, uh, which is a Japanese company. A lot of different Japanese companies making bass baits. Um, bass fishing is huge in Japan. So, um, you know, they're doing some pretty cool innovative stuff over there. So if you can find some of these Japanese baits, you're going to find some stuff that's different. Uh, the problem is sometimes it's hard to find, and when you do find them, they're kind of expensive. This wasn't outrageous. It was less than $10, but it was pretty close to $10. So most of the time you buy a spinner bait, you're usually not going to spend $10 on it. Um, they get pretty spendy. So speaking of spendy, I, I think the most expensive lure I probably own... Um, I didn't even buy myself. It's this Biwa swim bait. This thing's like 26 bucks to buy it. Uh, they do make a smaller version that's, that's two inches shorter. And um, it's a three and a half inch. It only has a single hook on it. And that one's like 16 or 17 bucks. So, you know, they can get kind of pricey. So like, I would never throw this bait um, unless I was throwing it on braid. Well, I have actually <laughs> fished with it when it wasn't on braid once, but um, I was pretty nervous because I was afraid I was going to lose it. And this $26 lure. Um, so I definitely don't want to lose it. So I'm going to fish that stuff on braid. Well, does anybody else have any other topics they want to cover? A 
I'm just reading through the comments here. I want to make sure I don't miss anything. You never answered about the buzzer frog, buzzer bait frog. Um, oh, okay. Here we go. Um, what are your opinions on sprinkler frog or the new lunker hunt buzz frogs? Uh, Jeff had that question. Well, I don't have any of them yet. Um, I know the sprinkler frog went crazy last year um, after the ICAST or whatever, that big fishing convention down in Florida. And, uh, yeah, everyone went nuts over the sprinkler frog. Uh, I have not fished with one. Um, I want to get one. It's on my list of things to get this year. Um, I really want to get one, do a, do a review on it. And um, I think that the Lunker Hunt buzz frog or prop frog, whatever they call it, um, will probably, you know, work just as good as the sprinkler frog. Um, I don't know what they cost um, for the, for the prop frogs. I know the sprinkler frogs aren't very bad though. They're like, they're like $10. Um, and I don't know how long they last. Basically the sprinkler frog, it's like a, a soft body frog, which I put all those away now, but, and it has a, like a swim bait tail on it, like a swim bait tail like this. And it just spins around when you reel it in. Um, I don't know. I mean, I don't know why it wouldn't work. Um, but it just makes a big old ruckus when you reel it through the water. Um, I definitely want to get one of those. I definitely, like I said, the Lunker Hunt one, as well as the Lunker Hunt prop fish. Um, it actually kind of looks like the prop on a, on a whopper plopper, just a little bit different. Um, yeah, I want to get, I want to get both of those and see, see how they do. Um, a lot of those topwater baits are pretty sweet. Sometimes they get kind of expensive though. So the good thing about that though, usually when you're fishing topwater, um, no problem just fishing braid all the time. That way, um, you know, you're not worried about what the line looks like in the water. You're not worried about the line sinking, uh, or I mean floating, I should say. So braid is going to float. The fish are going to see it, but it won't matter because it's on top of the water. So, um, always fish with braid, uh, with top waters. I do all the time because, um, A, you get that good hook set and, and B, you're not going to lose your lure, most likely anyways. All right, let's see. Any other questions that I missed? I don't even know if anyone's still watching. Well, we got 12 people watching? That's awesome. Purple fire tigers. It must be... Some crank baits that Lane's using for walleye fishing. All right, guys. Well, I want to thank everyone for stopping by. If you haven't subscribed to my channel, please do that. Uh, make sure you like the video. And I do have a giveaway video going on right now. I'm giving away a lot of great stuff. I just passed 1,000 subscribers. Um, and when I get to 1,100, 1, I'm going to pick seven winners for this giveaway. Um, I've got reels. Um, and it's a bunch of baits on there to give away. So, so it's going to be awesome. Um, do I have a preferred real lure combo? Um, I don't know. I really like, uh, with a spinning reel, I really like finesse worm fishing. So like a Nico rig or a wacky rig and, um, with bait caster, I don't know any, anything I like, I like fishing most anything. Um, but yeah, I really like, uh, like a medium heavy, or not a medium heavy, but like a medium action spinning rod with a fast tip and about six foot nine, seven foot long. Uh, I love that for fishing, um, fishing like wacky rig, Nico rig, any of those finesse things. All right. So thanks a lot, everybody. I'm really, uh, really glad that you stopped by and talked a little bass fishing lures with us. Um, make sure you hit that subscribe button and don't forget to check out my uh, giveaway video. Thanks for stopping. Thank <laughs> you.